associated and attached to this body that is in critical need of God to intervene. And if you've never been a caretaker, you understand, or you may not understand, but a caretaker's responsibility and the training of that caretaker sometimes is more um, impactful than even the patient himself. So I would ask that you bring the caretakers, and that's what I love about this church. Listen, we believe in the power of healing. And for those that are still debating that, you've come way too late because I have been the recipient of the divine healing touch of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I want you to stand with me in honor to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. In honor to Him. In honor to Him. We're going to be taking this next time and transition a segue into worship. And this is what you can to God, not what God can give to you. This is what you can afford to God. There are times, even on this platform, I've had myself on the back. It's, it's a challenge. My arms are not long enough to give you a real good path. Right? And I can ask you to pat me on the back, but you know, I appreciate that. But, uh, Expand, inhale and exhale that air. 
it, it's like, and I, you know, I'm a weather nut, but um, they just live for it, and it's the hype, and it's all the drumming, it's all of this, but I just pray that, you know, they um, are highly disappointed, and um, so anyway. I'm thrilled that you are here. God's got something for you today. Do you believe that God loves you enough that he would speak to an under shepherd, that is me, to communicate to you how much he loves you and to give you truth that will help you live your best life? And what I find out is when you live your best life, you're not just living your best life for him, but somehow he works it out to where it's your best life. It's not just what he can get out of it, but by putting him first, the reciprocal effect is you're living your best life. And um, I have met people and that is their tag. How are you doing? Man, I'm living my best life. And sometimes I wonder if that is real truth or if it's just something, you know, that is said. But I tell you what, when Christ is priority, you will be living your best life. It may not be the best of times, but it will be your best life. Amen. You can have a best life, not in so much in the best of times. Well, the word of the Lord spoke to us last Sunday, and I do not want us to minimize when God speaks a word. I'm collecting these words that God has given us sometimes just uh, through a word of wisdom, knowledge, or sometimes just um, through an interpretation of a message in tongues that is given corporately. We're keeping a log of those all throughout the year. And at times I will allow myself just to refresh my mind. What is God saying? Because what God says is the most important thing. It mutes everybody else's voice. It mutes what I see, what statisticians tell me, what specialists declare. It mutes all of that. What God says is truth. Let God be true and every man a liar. So I listened to that and I want to remind you, last Sunday God spoke to us. And he said, worship, to me, and um, the Lord was speaking to me in the individual in worship, that he says that he is walking in the midst of us today to be awakened to the activity of God is huge because sometimes God is active and people are not awakened and aware of his divine activity. So he is walking in the midst of us today. He is looking for hearts of individuals that are open and yielded to him. There is much that he wants to do in our lives, but sometimes he is hindered because we are not truly open. So we need to open and yield to him. He has healing. He has deliverance. He has gifts. He's got so much that he wants to give us and do in our lives. We must be open. So my question to you is today, not is God moving because he is. Not is God here because he is. Not is God desirous because he is. But what does God want to do? And am I open to that? So Father may... Uh, you find in this house, in a potter's house, um, a potter's wheel that is occupied by clay. That's every single one of us. And may you find that we are pliable to your hand and your touch. Will you agree with me in that regard? Amen. Amen. I am going to continue a message that I started um, last, well, I'm going to continue a part of the message that I started in a series. I don't know how to even classify this anymore. But um, I started a series of messages entitled Sustainability. And I dealt with some aspects of I'm 
I never found where God started something that he did not have the ability to sustain it. When he speaks a word, that word is eternal. He doesn't have to every day say, let there be light. He said it once, it's eternal. Okay? It is finished. He doesn't have to repeat that every day. (laughs) It's done. So his word is sustainable. And we've dealt with other things that I will not repeat for time's sake because the content um, is going to be challenging today. Just the amount of it and how to unpack it. But God dealt with me concerning that um, we need to deal with mental health. And that seems at times in a, a churchy context to be an oxymoron. That if you're saved, that area you don't deal with. You shouldn't deal with. And if you do deal with that, something must be wrong with you. And it's strange to me if, if you just look at it in an observational perspective. We believe God that he is going to be able to save us and we believe and ask prayer for healing in our body. But there are times that we ask God to do something in us physically And I'm just going to use this for an example. And I said this last Sunday, but I need to repeat it for the direction that I'm heading this Sunday. We will ask God, we need healing. And we trust him, and then we verify. I think Ronald Reagan said that, you know, not that I want to equate him with the gospel. But... He said, you know, when you're talking about other countries, you trust and verify. I suggest that with anybody in this house. If if you feel the divine touch of healing has come upon your life, God's not scared of verification. Come on. If it <laughs> he's not he's not scared of a, a, a general physician saying, dude, I saw something that's not there anymore. Well to God be the glory. You know? He is not scared of verification. And and we will, and there are things that we take um, medicine for. If, um, for instance, if if you are a diabetic and you do not alter your diet and you do not take medicine that is prescribed to you and you are in horrible shape and you come to me and you say, I just need prayer because I'm about to die. And then you tell me that your doctor has said for you to take this. And you just, you are not going to take it. You're just not going to take it. My question to you is, are you saying to me that you are limiting God to act in just one way and you have minimized him from acting in other ways? So now you're God and he is not. Now hear this, I'm about to balance it out. Because some of you are very religious and, and, and if, if you're not in the house, you probably are watching online. So let me just go ahead and deal with this straight up. I have known people that were convicted. Now we use that word conviction. Do you have time for me? I'm not screaming and preaching. I've not read my text, but I've got to lay a foundation here. All right? I've known people that have made their life legacy... I have not taken an aspirin or any medication, not a day in my life. If that is your conviction, I would suggest don't do it. Because a conviction is something you will die for. Not a preference of a religious idea. We use conviction so haphazardly. Well, I'm convicted of that. Are you willing to die for it? If you're not willing to die for it, that's really not a conviction. That is a preference. Conviction is something that runs deep. Somebody say amen. Amen. This is good treaching. And I'm not going to say anything else about that. But then 
then we will come to a place where, um, like 50 years old, 50 years old, my doctor gave me um, two birthday presents. One, a colonoscopy. Thank you. Right? A colonoscopy. And the other, a prescription for a low-dose aspirin. He said, you will take this for the rest of your life. Don't miss a day. Guess what I'm doing? Air a day. <laughs> Anybody understand what air means? Air a day. I take an aspirin. The genetics on my dad's side of the family is not really favorable for me not doing that. So God has spoken to a physician. The only way the doctor is smart is that God gives him the intelligence. Right? So, I know that some people have convictions of taking medicine. If that is you, hold true to your conviction. But don't put your conviction on everybody else. Please hear me. Just that, because you feel convicted about that, watch it, buckle up, ask your neighbor, are you buckled up? Does not make you more holy or more spiritual than the person that sits beside you that is taking an aspirin. Right? I had a lady, I had a lady that came, <laughs> did y'all see that? I had a lady, that, that's my kung fu. Um, yeah. So I had a lady come into my office one day. She did not cut her hair. She did not. That was a conviction to her. It was. And she had a problem with people that did. She came in and she was very sincere. You know people are sincere when they're teachable. If they're not teachable, they're not real genuine. They just want to impose their thoughts and their ideas on you, right? They want to guilt you. They want to make themselves feel better, whatever the case may be. But she was teachable. She said, I have this real issue because she had daughters. And her daughters were having issues because this was imposed upon them from mama. Anybody? Come on now. Help, help me out. Just stay with me. You don't have to shout me, but just make sure you stay with me. And she said, I'm just really concerned about this. She said, what should I do? I said, I would never allow a pair of scissors to cut, uh, touch my hair. If you feel like, she said, I actually feel like that will send me to hell. I said, I'd never, I would never allow a pair of scissors to touch my hair. But what about my girls? I said, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Not work out your kid's salvation or your neighbor's salvation. Just because it's a thing with you and God doesn't mean it's a thing with everybody you and God. So let's get off. Are you ready for this? Our high horse of super spirituality and just love God. Just love God. Why is this train of thought important? Because mental health functions in tandem with everything that I've just said to you. Everything. Everything. You are not God and we all know that, but sometimes we talk to people as if we are. Okay? And whether that's intentional or not, I, I just, we need to approach mental health in a different way, church. The church was messed up. Okay, I'm going to say it anyhow. Divorce was such a stigma in the Pentecostal church for so long. It was like the scarlet letter. It was until the church finally wised up. Those, wait for it, those that were so hard on divorce became to understand when their children got divorced. Now all of a sudden, it's not just the fact that they're heathens and devils. 
It's crazy how that works. It's easy to judge others until it parks its car in your garage. You see what I'm saying? Are you with me? Shout amen. amen. Welcome, live stream. You picked one fine day to join. Is your mental health sustainable? I talked to you last Sunday about um, the Sabbath. Last week, it was kind of heavy hitting from the tithing part straight at the beginning. And that was a pastoral moment. And I may take some more just depending on how things go. Uh, I, like I said, I'm done with that. So I, I took that aspect of Sabbath. And this week, I titled my painting Sabbath. Got it on there with quotations. It is what it is. And I look at it now in a different way. So... I said, the Lord made one day holy out of all the created, and he's created some awesome stuff, right? Just look around. Look around. It's crazy, a hummingbird, how that whole thing works, right? It's just, it's just amazing. And when you look at all the beauty and everything that he has done, he said, for your sake, I am going to put a period at the end of creation. It's not that these that he's... He's not any more creative in that he's emptied his creative tank, right? And we'll find that out when we get to heaven, right? So it's not that he's emptied his creative tank, but he says, now I need to rest. What I did was good. I'm going to back up, and I'm just going to enjoy it for a while. Rest is best. You will never be at your best if you do not understand how to rest. That is for your employer, that is for yourself, that is for your spouse, that is for your children, that is for your grandchildren, that is for your mental health. Now, I, I was listening to what I preached last Sunday. If you have not heard that message, it's not the preacher, but you need to listen to the content. I listened to it again, and I received so much more out of it than what I did preaching. Just by listening, taking a different perspective. And Regina's like, I told you that years ago. You should have, <laughs> you hear me? I don't like listening with her because she re-preaches to me what I just preached. All right, it's crazy. And, and some of you understand that, right? Some, some of the best preachers in your, family, or in, in your life is your spouse. Yeah, it's just easier coming from me. But um, so I was listening to it. And what troubled me is that I didn't say how to navigate away from that. I knew that God said stop because the content was so much that I knew if we added any more to that, what was said last Sunday, it would be way too much. Are you, are you with me? Bay Assembly, we are about to merge into a place that is going to allow us to be more effective in ministry. Pe people want real talk. And, and listen, it, it is not, oh, I think, and, and, and what a publisher says. This is word. This is word. Okay? So I'm going to share with you, and, and I ask Ethan to help me with some props because visuals are better. Um, you can go ahead and do that now. Thank you. Um, you remember the ladder, you remember the color of the ladder, and you, you visuals really do have an impact. Sister Wadley, I love you. I love you. Will you just give a round of applause to Sister Wadley? She and Brother Raymond have been so faithful to this church, and he's having some balance issues, and I just want to say, we love you. Elizabeth Howard, girl, I saw your... I saw her ponytail over in the shadows in prayer. I'm like, what? So, um, so what I want to share with you is another aspect of this, mental health. The enemy does not care if you're faithful to church just so you are not effective in church. Just so you're not effective in church. So if he can't take you out, he will wear you out. Hear it. If he can't take you out, he will wear you out. 
I'm going to say it again. If he can't take you out, he will help me. You're quick learners. So let's just say we, we talked about a holy day of rest, a Sabbath, a Sabbath. And that Sabbath is just a time where we're able to sit and allow our mind and our body. There's some things that you need to do in order, and I dealt with being a workaholic and how that we almost applaud that addiction and we do not understand the destructive nature, the volatility of that until too late. And um, how that that is a sign of insecurity, um, that is a sign where you feel like you are so needed and you have to be somebody's hero yeah. all the time. Yeah. That's, that's a lot of weight. Today I want to deal with how do you transition out of, out of, um, 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 I'm looking for a word, how do you transition out of, uh, here it comes, messed up thought process, a dysfunctional thought process. That's what I was looking for. Thank you for somebody that was giving me that vibe. Dysfunctional thought process. It's one thing to say, don't think that. Well, thank you. Now I'm thinking about it, right? I, I, you just messed me up worse. How do you not think about it? So what I want to share with you is what God said to me, all right? This is a word for you. Do you want to live a mental, in, in a mental health component that is sustainable? Some are functioning in a mental health capacity that you will not be able to sustain. So the Lord spoke to me four things, and I'm going to share them with you. Whether I get to all four or not, it doesn't matter to me. But the first thing, how do I correct it? Now I am exposed to it. How do I correct it? And I'm going to be dealing with some other things. Number one. The word remove came to my mind. You have to remove what you have been doing. Because if you keep doing what you've been doing, you're going to keep getting the same results. We understand that. The second thing he says is replace. It's not enough for you to remove, but you have to replace. Okay? The third thing is, he spoke to me, is renewal. Renewal, remove, replace, renewal. And this has to do with when you replace what you've removed, it is still fractured and you need it to be renewed. And I'm talking about your mind. And then rejoice. Okay? So these four aspects, I'm sorry guys, um, you, you're standing there and I, I appreciate your willingness. And I did not go over this with them in advance and in for that, I apologize as well. But I, I had to take a little rest this morning for some reasons, and that's, that's why I'm here. So this is the picture that I had when God dropped this in my spirit. Listen to this, and it was confirmed to me, Cameron, at men's retreat. Um, Reggie Dabbs, who was our speaker, some of you have known Reggie Dabbs. He's a powerful communicator and motivational speaker. And Reggie Dabb said, when God opened the door for this men's retreat, wait for it, God spoke two words to him, mental health. I'm like, I was rejoicing because I said, God, you can speak to me. This is amazing. You know, I, I'm, I'm encouraged already, and he's not even, he's not even dove into the context yet. But he said, mental health. And so then it was confirmed through another thing. So another, another gentleman came and he spoke into our lives. But Holy Spirit said this to me because I have, I have battled in some of this area. And I say this to you because it's important for you to see somebody standing holding a mic that is called to ministry that is anointed of God. 
If I'm not, I need to be doing something else. I am anointed to do what I am doing right now. To share with you that you are not alone. As a matter of fact, in my photos, I have a screenshot of a pastor, a young pastor, probably in his 30s. I shared with this, this with you some years ago. He was pastoring a flourishing church, had a wife, two beautiful children, and um, just a beautiful portrait. If you looked at their picture, you think that they are the poster children for what a Christian family should be. He committed suicide. A young man. He held a mic. He opened the word of God. Just because God use you, uses you does not negate the battles that you fight every single day. As a matter of fact, the more anointed you are, it probably says the harder you have had to fight to get through these battles. It's not that the anointing exempts you from the struggle, but it probably indicates the struggle is intensified and you have to cry more. You have got to plead more. You have got to invest more because the struggle is real. But when you're exhausted trying in my weakness, you are made strong, oh God. What is driving you? Last Sunday, we dealt with the need to be needed. How that that throws us into dysfunctional mentalities and, and thought process. What drives you? Watch this. This is a steering wheel that came off of about a 56 or a 57. Um, I, I'm assuming probably a Chevrolet. Doesn't make any difference. But I have this in my office along with a lot of other random things because I like old stuff. And God says to me, in order to correct, in order to correct the way that you're thinking, you have to understand that somebody is holding the steering wheel. Now, what does a steering wheel do? It navigates direction. A steering wheel navigates direction. I don't care if you've got an old beat up clunker. I do not care if you are riding in a Jaguar or whatever other high end vehicle that I cannot pronounce the name. There are some things that are synonymous. You got to steer the rascal. Now, I know, I know some of these, some of these cars are self-steering. I, I have control issues. And I'm just going to go ahead and tell you I've got control <laughs> issues, especially, especially when it comes to navigating a vehicle. I'm not there yet. Uh, some people need that car to drive for them. And, and I would almost give to the cause, but others do not. But for the sake of this thought... That steering wheel navigates you. It goes where you tell it to. It's one of the first, it's one of the first principles in driving. And God says this: what and who is driving you? What and who is driving you? Some of you are in the driver's seat, and this was what was revealed to me at men's retreat. And anger is driving you. It is something drives you. Some, something drives you. It is, it is the necessity of motivation. Something drives you. And some people, they live for vengeance, anger. I'll show them. I'll, and, and sometimes that's just, if I can be stubborn enough to outlive them or outsurvive them, right? That's success to me. And that is driving them. That is driving them. Have you ever saw an angry driver? I mean, in real life. 
It's like, Lord, help us. You know, they, they might hit somebody. And you can see them. I mean, they're flailing their hands. Sometimes they get mad at me. 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 They get mad at me. Sometimes jealousy is driving people. Sometimes hurt is driving them. Now, I'm not so interested in the what because that's a whole nother chapter. But right now I'm interested in the who. Guys, will you come up for a second? Carjacking is a huge thing in our culture today. I've never in my life, anybody see the Chick-fil-A uh, worker that stopped? Some Yahoo was trying to carjack a mama while she is unbuckling her baby from the car seat. And this Chick-fil-A guy took him to the ground. Come on. That makes me want to buy a Chick-fil-A sandwich. Right? Took him to the ground. People will rob you of the ability to go where you need to go. And if you are in the driver's seat, we have a problem. Because you cannot help taking who you are and putting it in your navigation for the destination that you want to go. Who you are is where you're heading. Who you are is where you're heading. I've asked Ethan and Peyton to help me because this is what I feel happens to people that battle with their thoughts. Some battle negative thinking every single day. And it's a real effort for you not to navigate toward negativity. You were raised in it. It was the atmosphere, the culture. You know, instead of, uh, instead of complimenting, you know, the meal may have been 90% good, but the tea didn't have enough ice in it. You're always that one that finds that one thing, not the 90%, but the one thing that is wrong. If you know that person, do not look at them right now. <laughs> do not. Keep looking straight ahead at this steering wheel because you're about to be booted out of that driver's seat, <laughs> okay? Some of, some of us battle every single day with anxiety because the what if most of the time never happens, but it could. It might. It probably. And these things weigh heavy on us. Now, whoever's going to carjack me that is not the good guy, I want you to come. All right, Ethan, I want you to get on my driver's side. Ethan, now, Typically, anybody that carjacks you has something that is going to intimidate you to get out. A gun, right? Unless you've got a bigger gun, just saying, <laughs> right? You know, don't, don't you love it? What is it? Indiana Jones, remember that part where the guy is doing all this and he just pulls out his pistol and shoots him? <laughs> Okay, I lost some of you. Okay. <laughs> I mean, he's doing all this karate stuff, and he just says, <laughs> That's a good scene. It really is. That's a good scene. Um, so something has to intimidate you, or I'm not giving up my car. But whoever carjacks you wants the ability to take what you've invested in and take it someplace else. Yeah. Zach, come here for a second, buddy, and I want you to get in my back seat. I want you to get in my back seat. Ethan, you have come and you have carjacked me. You have thrown me out of the vehicle, and now I am beside the road. You have removed me from my position to navigate 
what God has given me, the vehicle. Your body is a vehicle of Christ. You are the temple, the vehicle, the house, the representative of. But somebody stronger than you has come and removed you out, and he has just set in along with the cargo that you have invested in, your baby, your children, your goods, your young person. And now you are thrown to the side and somebody else is in the driver's seat. That's where many are. The enemy has hijacked you, carjacked you, and you and everything that you have sacrificed for, everything that you have purchased, everything that you have invested in is now at the mercy of somebody that does not love you, does not care about you, is not concerned about you, and you have been immobilized and stuck, and all you can do is wonder where is he taking This is the part of how do I change my thoughts? Positive thinking is good, and you need to do it. But I don't care if you say it a thousand times. If negativity is driving you, that's where you're heading. If depression is driving you, you're going straight off the cliff, baby. Whatever is driving you is determining the destination that you are going. That's driving. And if you are not, they've got everybody that you love. So, Holy Spirit says to me, he says, Steve, you have to take back what the enemy has stolen from you. Take it back. Take it back. I said, but I, I, I have said this before until I battled it. I've said it before I battled it. Um, and it does help if you live in darkness and, and, and stuff like that. In darkness, um, I'm not talking about lights for media. Okay, I'm, I'm, let's, let's get over that. I'm talking about if you're in your house and it has to be dark all the time and it's not because of an eye issue or something like that, we've got issues. You, you need to open up the windows, get, get some light in. But you can listen to um, Integrity Hosanna. Anybody remember that praise and worship? Okay, you can listen to that. Don't, just keep, stay in your seat. <laughs> you have no clue. You have no clue. So you can listen to that repeatedly, but if somebody is driving you, it still doesn't make any difference. It still does not. You can allow the breeze to blow in your face, and you will look at yourself in the mirror. I should be happy for everything. I am blessed. My kids are healthy. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm, but it still doesn't matter because somebody else has taken, you have been hijacked, carjacked, and somebody else is in the driver's seat, and you're just hanging on for dear life. In other words, you are now the passenger of somebody else that has taken authority over you and you literally are saying, so where are we going today? And you're holding on for dear life, scared at every turn, at every angle as he slams on brakes and speeds up and literally laughing in your face because you claim the peace of God. But you have been hijacked and carjacked and the enemy is driving your thoughts. I want you just to rest for a second in that because some of you have now attained a visual of something that you just didn't.
forget. My God. I want you just to close your eyes for a second. I want you just to allow this moment to sink in. All right. I'm sorry. No, I'm not. But I, I, this, 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 is, it, this isn't about me being all preachy. It, this is just about me trying to communicate what God's speaking to my heart, okay? And, and, and many of us, the enemy will drive you to church. He will drive you to church just so he can torment you on the way home. Because he will stop so you can get out. My God, I'm preaching. He will stop so you can get out. He will even open the door. Because it's not as tormenting if you don't go than if you do go and get back in where he is driving you. You want to go to church? Let's go to church. Let's go to church. That's even better for me. You get a dose of Jesus and some hope. You get a shot in the arm. I can do this only to crawl right. He unlocks the doors for you. He comes in, sits down, waits till service is over. Are you with me? Any? No, no, don't make me preach this all over again. Is anybody with me? He's got your stinking key fob. Beep, beep. We going in now, and we go in, and we sit on the we sit on the row, we sit on the row, and and we wait till church is over. Come to the altar. Oh, God, I need you. Yes, I need you. And the reality is, he unlocks the door. He opens the door, allows you your seat because you are not strong enough. So he takes you home from work, takes you home from school. You pick up the kids. And all the while, you just pray that he doesn't destroy you and everybody that's in that vehicle. And there's nothing you can do about it. There are some of you watching by live stream, maybe even some in this house today. And you want to. Who in their right mind wants to think in dysfunction, negatively. Who wants to be filled with anxiety and fear and apprehension for panic attacks to overwhelm you? And all the while, you've got 88.5. Oh, you don't know that one. What's, what's, the, what's the other one, the love? Caleb, Caleb, thank you. Caleb or whatever the other one is. You pick it out. You pick it out. Okay? Not country. Not rap. Not Led Zeppelin. Kayla. And you just can't get it. It's non-sustainable. Your peace will never be sustained as long as the enemy is in the driver's seat. Steve, I, 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 I want to change, but I can't change. I, it's just like, I, I, I pray, I, pr I pray. You know, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. I, I pray, I pray. I, I open up the doors, I get out. I expose myself to people. I don't like people, but I even shake hands with people. I, 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 go, I go to Walmart. I go to Walmart and in, instead of doing the, the pickup thing, I even, I even go to Walmart. I push the buggy. 
so everybody can look at what's in my buggy. Remember that part? That was real. That was real. God has given me authority. It's when you lack confidence of who you are that you allow somebody else to take the seat. Okay? So, oh God, I need you to come and I need you to just take the wheel. <laughs> We're going to get there. But you allowed him in. You take him out. The authority that is in you. Anybody ever seen a mad mama before? I mean a mad mama. A mad mama? You do not. I, I would rather go fight somebody in the ring that is a champion. Attila the Hun. Or... The wrestling pro too. Am I anybody remember the wrestling pro? No? Cowboy James Kelly? Any please, please. Do you? Thank you, Jackie. Thank you. We'll chat afterwards, all right? I I would rather go against some wrestler than a mad mama. Mama? Some of you just need to get mad. You, you've been on a trip you didn't ask for, going places you didn't want to go, terrified of things you never should have seen, and your babies are having to experience that? Who told you that you were not the child of the Most High God? Where did somebody convince you of that? Take back what the devil takes took from you. Take it back. I don't even know where he is. God does. God, God could whoop him. God could take him out. But it's better for you that you get it back. Okay? So I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. It's going to be Sunday. It's going to be Sabbath. And the devil's going to take you back to church. But he wasn't counting on that Sunday being this Sunday. You wouldn't count on that Sunday. This is, this, is an, this is an Uber gone rogue. Watch, watch. Some of you are paying for this ride. And you're paying dearly. Okay? That's another story for another. Don't, don't twist my arm to preach that. Don't twist it. But when you, when you finish laying it at his feet and you say, God, just you and me, your emotions are lying to you. And, and watch this. Some, this is why rest is so important. Listen to me, live stream. When you are tired, you are more susceptible to the attack of the enemy mentally. When you're tired, when you're fatigued physically and mentally, you are easier prey of the adversary. This isn't a spiritual thing. It, sometimes it just has to do with the fact I'm wore out. And because you're so stubborn that you're not resting, the enemy's just kicking you around like you're a rag dog, doll, and you're wondering, where is God? It's because you're not, you don't have a Sabbath. Sunday, candidly, is not my Sabbath. It's just not. You have got to have a, have a Sabbath and keep it Holy, because rest is best. So when you lay it down, and we're about to close, Peyton, you look good. <laughs> Who told you you looked dapper today? I did. I told Peyton he looked dapper today. Is he rocking those glasses or what? Is he rocking those glasses? Next Sunday, Peyton very well may get that steering wheel, but this is enough today. Because the question has been answered, why am I continually battling this thing? 
Why? Why am I continually? I, it's, not, it's not that anybody doesn't want peace. It's not that they don't want freedom from, from these negative thoughts. I mean, some of you, and I've been that person, wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and panic hit you. Boom! Out of nowhere, something that you have no control over, you have no control over, and who does have control over is heading to a dead end, and it's going to be a wreck. You wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning, and you're almost in panic. You dread for light to come up because you know that you're going to have to face impossibilities and issues that you are not prepared for. You certainly can't take the wheel back because what is driving you is more powerful than you are. Because you've lost your identity. You are subject to everything. Where are we going? You're asking instead of telling. Where are we going today? Where are we going? Just please slow it down. Please stop this. Please don't. It's like you're out of control because you are. You're trying to negotiate destination with somebody that never should be in the driver's seat. You're pleading for your life. You're pleading for your children's life. And you're begging for something you should be directing. My God, stand with me. I'm done. This is it for today. This is all we can handle. Thank you for standing there and sitting there. You can be seated. I, I, look, I don't know if this is impacting you as much as it in, is me, but visuals have a way of opening things up to me. And some of you have been sitting over here it's like, oh, I love you. You're loving Jesus on the craziest ride of your life. With Caleb on. With the Gaithers on. Because I want to be gender and, and generational neutral here. And I'm a Gaither fan, so don't. With the Gaither CD playing, that's wonderful. But you're still in torment. Does it mean you don't love God? No. And the enemy will guilt you and guilt you, especially after you come to church. You shouldn't be feeling that way. That preacher preached and people were happy. You see everybody else smiling. Everybody else is smiling, but you're not. Everybody else's husband's happy, but yours is not. Everybody else's spouse is okay, but yours is not. Their children are right, but yours is not. Look at you. Look at you. And you are tormented because you have allowed a carjacker to come by and to throw you out of the place that you know that God needs to be. Those of you on live stream, dear God, if I've ever preached a message for the church, watch me. You will never be able to sustain this. Never. As a matter of fact, what will happen, you will be so afraid of a car, you won't even get back in, let alone drive. So it comes to this. Today, I need you done. Today. This will be a huge step. Today, I need you done. I am not a psychiatrist. I, 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 this, is, this, isn't about, this isn't about me being a professional in mental health. I'm, I'm talking to you word. And I'm going to share with you next Sunday, if the rapture doesn't take place, how that removal requires replacement because nobody at the wheel is as bad as the wrong person at the wheel. Are you done? 
live stream. I need to say this so that you understand how I can associate. Do you realize that Sundays used to determine the direction in my navigation? A good Sunday, a good week. A down Sunday, a down week. Good attendance, good week. Bad attendance. Numbers don't mean anything to who? Oh, what about God? Finances. Remember what I talked to you about? Last Sunday, you will, you will never know, you will never know the weight of the finances of this church. Should I? Is it my responsibility? No. Do I allow it to be? Yeah. Because in my head, when things are financially good, I'm okay. Is it that way in your home? Have you ever had financial issues in your home and it affects everything, the way you think, how you plan, what you do? Should I even be thinking that way? And then, then the enemy says, oh yeah, that vision, that's a vision, all right. You're looking, you're looking to pay the electric bill. A win to you is to pay the electric bill. And somebody throwing down the tip, throwing down the tip, I'm worried about trying to pay the electric bill. And the enemy is like, yeah, that's a vision, all right. That's a vision. Oh, wow, that's big. Good for you, boy. Good for you. And he's steering me wherever he wants me to go. Hear me. Hear me. You're looking at a guy that is done. I am done with Sundays. Who shows up? You think not showing up is not a big deal. It's huge. If not in your head, in mine. <laughs> if you don't come for Jesus' sake, just say, I'm going for that old preacher. You know, at least he'll know. At least he's okay. At this point, I don't care. I do, but I, I do, but I. Do I? I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'll work that out this week. It's, it's, look, it's a, it's a big deal. But I'm telling you, at 57, Regina, I can't sustain that. I can't. Because, and it's not just that, and I said this because I want you to see the similarities that I'm not talking about something that I don't live. Your work may be the same way. Self-employed, a manager. If, if the numbers are good, everybody's happy. If they're not, mm -hmm. it's like coaching. You win ball games, God help Auburn. Right? If you lose ball games, you're out of there because winning is success. You're standing. Heavenly Father, I needed to be able to relate to them because I need them to know that I connect with what's going on. This is with their jobs. This is with their finances at home, their mental health at home. This is with their babies. This is with their kiddos that they don't know what the future is going to hold. This, some of this is with retirement and health longevity. The enemy says, up. Oh, you feel that pain? That's something critical. That's something critical. And, and we, we come to church and we get, we get encouraged, but we climb right back into that passenger seat and we let the devil drive us mad, drive us insane, drive us depressed, drive us to our 
bitter end of anxiety where we have sleepless nights. And all the while, he has said, you don't love God. If you loved God, you wouldn't be thinking this way. You wouldn't be feeling this way. None of the above. But the fact is, we do love God. We have just given somebody authority in a place they never should have had authority. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. I pray that we would start becoming aware of the mind of Christ. And Father, today, as we announce we are done, I pray that we would meditate and rest on a holy day of rest. we got to be our best. The only way to be our best is to rest that holy day, that Sabbath, and then determine who has the who? Some of us have determined today somebody has the wheel and they have just been driving me in places and ways that I just cannot sustain. So God, today, my step with you is to say I'm done. That's the step. And I'm open to be transformed into your life. In Jesus' name I pray. Everybody said amen. amen. I want you to look up here. Why not pray for us now? Because you've got to make sure you're done. I, I can pray for the transformation now. <laughs> I can pray for the transformation now. But if you're done, if you're done, I want you to do just like Brother Murtis. I want you to take a step of faith. Thank you for your obedience. If you're done, if you're done, if you're done, I want you to take a step of faith. Just done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. The transformation is going to come next. Uh, and and you, I want you to start reading Romans chapter number 12. You're going to start, you're going to start sensing the transformation. You're going, to start, you're going to focus on the things of God. You're, 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 you've got to replace. You can't remove without replacing. You can't remove without replacing. You've got to replace it. You've got to replace it. A, a, a car without a vehicle that is going is, is danger to everyone. Danger to everyone. Wow, would you look at this, God? Would you look at this? Whoo, my God, my God. Just rest, just rest. Hey, I tell you what, this is what I do when I surrender and I say I'm done. I just raise my hands. I, I surrender, I'm done. I give up. Raising hands simply says I give up. I surrender, I give up. Right here, right now. This is the beginning. This is the beginning. This is the beginning, church. This is the beginning. Those of you watching on live stream, I want you to take a step of faith. If that is just standing where you are, acknowledging where you are, asking God to minister to you where you are, you make it personal. But I want you to know that the day of a wild ride is over. It is over. The enemy is not going to determine my destination. Not another day. Not another thought. Not another moment. Not another week. Not another night. Not another day. Today, I will not be climbing into the passenger seat. I may drive slow, but I'm going to get behind the wheel. And I'm going to take back the authority. Take it back in Jesus' name. Remove, 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 remove. You're done, remove. This week, I want you to start removing. Some, some of you have been so perplexed. It's, it's ang anxiousness, anxiousness about what might be, what is, what could be, what things are coming around the corner that you can. I want you in the name of Jesus to take back what the enemy has taken from you. The perfect peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall keep your hearts and your minds through Jesus Christ our Lord. Father, we surrender. And today, 
we announce we're done. <laughs> There's going to be freedom this week just by making that step. Freedom. Freedom. All right. <laughs> uh, boy, I feel a fresh breath of Holy Ghost. God's doing, he's doing, let him do it, let him do it, let him do it, let him do it. It is not by might, it is not by power, but it is by my spirit, says the Lord. Your assignment this week is to acknowledge what is driving you. Some of that will be through illumination of Holy Spirit in your prayer. Some of you actually, you have forgotten. It's been so long. You have forgotten. God's going to, he's just going to peel back some things and he's going to show you. This is where it happened. That jumped in the driver's seat. And you've been holding on for dear life ever since. So through prayer this week, through prayer, I want you to say, Father, I told you I'm done. Now reveal to me what I need to remove. And then don't ask permission. Don't go to a bargaining table. Just say, in the name of Jesus. You no longer are driving my destination. You aren't. No longer. Say it and mean it. Say it and mean it and then go. You've got to replace it. You've got to replace it. Do you receive this word in Jesus' name? Do you? Do you? Walk out of here with no guilt. There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So, you can't do anything about yesterday. I have determined, and this seems so elementary, and you're about to leave, I can't, I can't determine who comes to church, who does not come to church. Who gives, who does not give. Who involves, who does not involve. I don't have that power. Determine what you have power to do, what you don't have power to do. If you don't have any power over it, then don't worry about it. Give it to God. That's easier said than done. I understand it. I am that one. But we're going to help you next week. Because your destination is not a dead end. Have I told you that I love you lately? You guys are amazing. Cindy, do you mind if we pray for you on the behalf of Keith? Man, you didn't have to do that at 56, did you? <laughs> Keith is um, surgery tomorrow. And uh, we just believe that God has already started ministering and doing a healing work. Sued me fine if doctors say, gee, why are we here? You know, what, what? Uh, but however God chooses to do it, let God be God because he's God. But what we're going to do is we're going to pray for Keith and we're going to pray for Cindy and Mallory that God would just give them peace. Because how many of you know the waiting? Oh, that's tough. So, um. Uh, my ugly face is going to be right there. We're going to walk this thing together, right? Because that's what family does. And we're going to believe 
that what God does is far better than anything that we could imagine. Family, stretch your hands forward this way. Heavenly Father, I thank you because you have Keith right in the palm of your hand. None of this has taken you off guard. None of this has taken you by surprise. So, Father, he loves you. His life is committed to you. Father, you have already proven yourself by healing him of cancer. And, Father, heart is no different. <laughs> Thank you in Jesus' name that you have protected. Father, you have already ordered the right doctors, the right anesthetists, the right nurses. You have already ordered, Father, every caretaker, everyone that's going to give an IV. Father, you have anointed them to do their very best. So, Father, we are not releasing them into the hands of doctors and physicians. We're releasing them into your hands. Keith is in your hand. And what you're going to do is you're going to use the hand of others to just accomplish your will and your work. I speak peace in Keith's life. Father, may he feel your presence and your anointing more than he has ever sensed you so near in his life. Jehovah Rapha, be there. Jehovah Rapha, be there. Be your healer. Be his healer, Father. You are our healer. And I thank you for peace that is going to overwhelm family as we just rest in your promises and we see your divine results. Now, Father... We count it done in the strong and powerful name of Jesus for your glory and for your honor. And everybody shouted in agreement, amen. Amen. What do folks do without the good old Lord? I don't know. I love you online. Thank you so much for watching. Wednesday nights we have discipleship. Lordy, have mercy. If you are not following discipleship, I wish you would. And um, it'll save all of us about five years of teaching in advance if all of us listen to Wednesday nights. Um, also, please do not forget uh, next Sunday morning, uh, next Sunday night, as we get prepared for a wonderful time and uh, get the word out. God loves you. I love you. We need to love the world. Let's be Jesus in skin. Let's go have church, Bay Online, Bay and Hero location. God bless you.